Okay, let's talk about logarithms. So logarithms are defined as the inverses to exponential functions. So if I have an exponential function like f of x equals 5 to the x, the inverse function is given by log base 5 of x. Um, so remember, the inverse function tells you the input when you already know the output. So f of x is great if you know a number that you want to raise 5 to, but you don't know what that number, you don't know what 5 raised to that number is. Then you would use f of x. f inverse of x is when you already know what 5 raised to some power is, but you want to know what that power was. So log base 5 of x tells you the power that you have to raise 5 to in order to get x. And we'll talk more about interpreting logarithms later in the video. For now, let's recognize that we know at least this much about logarithms, which is because it's an inverse function, we know that f of f inverse of x equals x, as well as f inverse of f of x also equals x. So these cancel. That gives us the rules 5 raised to the log base 5 of x equals x, or log base 5 of 5 to the x equals x. So these cancel is, is the point of that. And it doesn't have to be log base 5, it could be log base 12 or anything, as long as you, you also have a 12 here. So you'll see that uh, as you see more logarithmic expressions. Um, so maybe you've never seen logs before, and when you see something like log base 4 of 64 equals 3, you have no idea what that means. Well, there's this cute little trick called the Hart method, which lets you convert a logarithmic expression or equation into the equivalent exponential equation. So log base 4 of 64 equals 3, the way you convert this into an exponential equation is like so. You, you say 4 to the third power, so the base of the log raised to the right side of the equation, equals 64. So 4 to the third equals 64. You see how we've drawn a heart here? So this is the equivalent exponential equation. So you know this is true, or you can verify it on a calculator, so you know that this logarithmic expression is true. Let's do a couple more examples. How about log base 7 of x equals 4? So again, 7 to the fourth equals x. You just draw a heart. 7 to the fourth equals x. So that's the x that's going to solve this equation. Here's another one. Log base x of 125 equals 3. You can get x to the third equals 125. So from there you can take the uh, cube root, get the x equals 5. You don't often see the unknown in the base of the logarithm, but it's possible. So that's how you use the Hart method to convert between logarithmic expressions or equations and exponential equations. Um, but you can convert all day long, but you ought to have a good idea of what a logarithm is just from looking at it. So if I give you something like log base b of a, what you're actually looking at there is the answer to the question, what power of b makes a? So log base b of a tells you the power you have to raise b to in order to get a. So if you, if you see log base 3 of 81, what this is, this is just a number, and the number it is is the power you have to raise 3 to in order to get 81 which is 4. So you could use the Hart method to verify that, but you get it's, it's the number that you have to raise the base to in order to get 81. So that's how you can interpret logarithms just by looking at them. I think that's important to know how to do. Uh, you should recognize that logarithms are exponents. You're looking at an exponent here, and that's why it's important. That, that's why it's important to know how to interpret logarithms. Let's talk about rules of logarithms, uh, like we did in the last video. How about if I have log base 3 of 9 times 27? Is there a way to solve this without having to multiply out 9 and 27? Well, let's, let's see if we can figure that out. I'm going to set this equal to x, and then use the Hart method. 3 to the x equals 9 times 27. Now, since I have 3 to a power, I want the right side to also be 3 to a power. So I'm going to convert 9 and 27 to 3 squared and 3 cubed. So 3 to the x equals 3 squared and 3 cubed. Uh, now I can combine those into 3 to the 2 plus 3. That's just a rule of exponents. And now I get that x is 2 plus 3, or x is equal to 5. So that's good. We, we, found, we found a way to solve that without having to actually do this multiplication. But I want to give you a better idea of what's really going on here. When we change 9 into 3 squared and 27 to 3 cubed, we're actually changing that into 3 raised to the log base 3 of 9 times 3 to the log base 3 of 27. So you know that this is true because these can cancel by just the inverse function rules we had at the start of the video. Um, but the point is, you're raising 3 to the power, right, what does log base 3 of 9 mean? It's the power you have to raise 3 to in order to get 9. So when you actually raise 3 to that power, you have to get 9. Um, so this, you might use this if you didn't know that 3 squared was 9. But what this does for you is this now becomes 3 all to the uh, log base 3 of 9 plus log base 3 of 27, and then you get that x equals log base 3 of 9 plus log base 3 of 27, and you should look at how similar that is to what we started with, 
which is all we've done is taken this product and split it up into two different logarithms. And so this is your first rule of logarithms, and here's the proof if, uh, if that's going to help you. But the basic rule is log base anything of a times b can be split up into log base x of a plus log base x of b. So this is a really useful rule, um, and it's going to help us prove some of the other rules of logarithms. So let's look at log base 2 of 8 to the third power. Well, this is just the same if we expand that 8 out. This is just the same as log base 2 of 8 times 8 times 8. And then we can use this rule up here to change that into uh, three logarithms. Log base 2 of 8 plus log base 2 of 8 plus log base 2 of 8. So you can see that that's just three times log base 2 of 8. And appreciate how similar this is to what we started. The only difference is we've taken this exponent on the 8 and moved it down in front here. And you can always do that. So that's your next rule, which is that log base b of a to the x equals x times log base b of a. So you can move this exponent down in front of the logarithm. And this is super useful because if you're given something like 3 to the x equals 4 to the x plus 2 or something, how would you solve that? Well, you can take a log of both sides log of 3 to the x equals log of 4 to the x plus 2. That's the basic rule of algebra. Now you can move these unknowns down out of their exponent spot. So log base 3 is just a number, whatever base you're using. It's just a number. x plus 2 times log of 4. So now this is just a linear equation, and you can solve that with basic algebra. Uh, so that's why this rule is extremely useful. I think it's probably the most useful rule of logarithms. So it's good to know. This also gives us a way to prove this quotient rule, which is another one you'll see in the back of textbooks, uh, because you could also write this as log of a times b to the minus 1, which becomes log of a, right? Whatever base this is, it's pretty independent of the base. Log of a plus log of b to the minus 1, and then the minus 1 comes down, and you get that log of a uh, minus log of b is what we started with. That's log of a divided by b. Um, so that's another rule that you often see, but it's a direct result of the previous two rules. So let's talk about some common logs that you're going to see, like log without a base, log of x. If you don't see a base given, it usually means you're taking log base 10. That's just a convention. Another common log is if you see ln of x, this is known as the natural log. That's equal to the log base e of x. e is a constant. It's irrational, like pi, so it, it's, it's a repeating decimal. goes on forever. Uh, but this comes up all the time in calculus, as well as the number e is really important in calculus. So this is known as the natural log, and uh, uh, that's a really common log. So suppose these are so common that sometimes your calculator only has a natural log button. It doesn't have a log base 2 button. So say you want to know log base 2 of 41. Well, you're going to use a change of base. This, this is kind of a trick to get around that. So I'm going to set this equal to x, use the heart method, 2 to the x equals 41. Now I'm going to take the natural log of both sides, assuming that a, the natural log is the button you have on your calculator, and now I take the exponent down in front. I get x times ln of 2 equals ln of 41, and now x is just ln of 41 over ln of 2. So that's how you can use change of base to actually calculate this with a calculator that maybe only has an ln button. Um, so the basic change of base formula is as so. Uh, basically, you just take the log log of your choice of the of the big number divided by the log of the little number. So I usually use ln, ln of a divided by ln of b, and that's how you can calculate that with a calculator that only has an ln button. Um, let's talk about graphs of logarithms. So I'm going to draw an exponential graph here first. Let's call this e to the x. Um, and since ln of x is going to be the inverse of that, the graph of ln of x is a reflection across the line y equals x. And that's because we're just switching all the points. Every point that we have that's x comma e to the x, we're going to switch those, and it's going to become x comma ln of x. So you switch x and y, so you end up with a graph that looks like this. Now, the key points that you need to know about this graph are where does it hit the x-axis? Um, so remember, all exponential graphs hit the x-axis at 0, 1, because anything to the 0th power is 1. This hits the x-axis, therefore, at 1, 0. You just swap x and y. So it hits the x-axis at x equals 1. That's good to know. It's also good to notice that this is going to approach the y-axis, but never exceed it. And that's because you could never have, you could never have a uh, negative number as x. You could never take ln of negative 5 
because there's no number you can raise e to in order to get negative 5. It's not possible. So it's undefined for negative numbers, um, and that's what the graph looks like. So I hope this video has helped you understand logarithms. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.